Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, world. Uh, good morning to our viewers. Uh, hello and good morning to each of you. Um, and welcome back uh, to the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. Uh, yes, we are back like a shark attack this morning, back like we left some, back like we ain't got no clothes in our back, and for the world is a better place when the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast is taking place. And so, yes, we are back with uh, all our two parties this morning. Uh, they got a few things to take care of. And so we thank you guys for tuning in with us this morning. Uh, for me and Al, um, as we conversated about the, the latest sports topics that have taken place from this past week and will be upcoming this week. It is always a blast to have you all tune in to participate with us every weekend. As a reminder that every week we always like to begin our podcast by reminding our audience that the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast can be found on Facebook via the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast community page, on Instagram at the Early Morning Sports Talk pod, YouTube as the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify as the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast as well as our own Facebook pages via Brandon Price, Jamar Goodman, Rod Tier, well, and well as this morning uh, for our guest, Al Williams. Uh, today is uh, January 28th of 2023, and we have seen yet again another fascinating week in the sports world, where we saw a great and entertaining NFL divisional playoff weekend in which the San Francisco 49ers, Philadelphia Eagles, Cincinnati Bengals, as well as the Kansas City Chiefs all took care of business and advanced the championship weekend. However, on the other hand, we had some disappointments occur, and a couple of notable quarterbacks fell short, uh, such as Dak Prescott and Josh Allen. And now these teams face the question of how to upgrade and or regroup their rosters in order to hopefully make a run for February next season. Um, additionally, Anthony Davis returned for the Los Angeles Lakers, but I, uh, he had another scare again, bro. I'm um, in a win over San Antonio. Um, as well as LeBron James uh, nearing closer. Uh, he is now uh, very close. Um, probably this week, Al. If, if he go crazy this week, he can get it this week. Uh, but it's very likely uh, next week um, for the NBA all-time score mark in which he would uh, try up uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And so, introducing our guest for this morning, Mr. Al Williams, uh, for the second week in a row. And throughout the remainder of this postseason, uh, Al is the founder of the Al and Pal Show, which can be found on various platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, or basically any platform where you can find your podcast. And excuse me for saying YouTube Live. Um, that's uh, It's just YouTube, y'all, not YouTube Live. So excuse me for that. I don't know if they caught that, Al. Um, on the other hand, uh, Al, is a very <laughs> Al is a very active supporter of the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. Um, off to providing posts, great content, and just keeping us tagged in on the loom of what happens on Tuesday evenings at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, which is a great podcast called The Alan Powell Show. Uh, Al is an avid sports fan, rooting primarily for Indiana and Chicago-based sports teams. Um, and unfortunately, uh, ladies, Al is taken and have been blessed to be in marriage for 16 years currently and resides within East Indiana with his family. Trying to get to where you are, Al, man. I'm seven years in. You are 16 in. God bless you, brother. Yes, and Al has been doing the Al and Powell show for seven years now as well, uh, consistently for five years straight. And his podcast, the Al and Powell show, has been screamed on live radio, uh, 102.3 FM, uh, within 2019. It continues to make waves in the sports world. And so, Al, my brother, uh, I truly appreciate you. We truly appreciate you getting up with us and joining us this morning. And we'd like to welcome you to the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. How are you this morning, sir? This week was a little bit better than last week. Um, so it wasn't as hard as getting up this morning. It was a little bit easier. So there you go. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, yes, and to begin, um, Prescott JB stated, um, can we please address the overall kill of Burger King commercials? Whopper, 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 whopper. And so... Um, yeah, it must be something going on with Burger King, um, Al. I'm not exactly sure. I missed that. Yeah, I don't know nothing about that as well. I'm in, I'm out of the loop on that one. So I have to look it up now, though. Right, right, right. And so we appreciate your commentary, bro. Definitely. But rock with us for this conversation, Prescott uh, or, or, or Josh. Uh, Prescott JB uh, is a very avid supporter of the podcast, bro, and um, play high school football with him. Um, brothers doing very well in life. Uh, his brother played in the NFL for a number of years. Um, he was just on our podcast um, probably about a month, maybe two months ago. 
And so um, he's he's a very avid supporter. And so his comments might talk about Burger King, but they might talk about sports too. Gotcha. Right. Cool. Exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah. Um, on the other hand, uh, Mr. Jamar Goodman um, and, and Mr. Ann Jones, uh, they are a bit busy this morning. And so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's get right into it. And so, Al, bro, uh, we had the divisional playoff uh, weekend uh, that occurred last week. Um, and so we don't get into, like, basically talking about the, 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 the games, but it's in a creative way, okay? And so the creative way is more so NFL reactions and Nova reactions. And from there, you can just kind of say, okay, is this a reaction, an overreaction, et cetera. And so Prescott, JB, et cetera, for our few viewers, you guys can participate as well. That would be fantastic. Uh, we'd appreciate the commentary. And so uh, let us begin with the NFL reactions and overreactions for the NFL divisional playoff weekend. And so after last week's uh, – playoff loss to the San Francisco 49ers. Is it an overreaction to think that Dak Prescott cannot lead this team to his ultimate goal? Is that an overreaction? How do you feel about that, Al? Uh, I want to call it an overreaction. Like who I think they shouldn't they know what they got. This is Dak. He, you know, he's not gonna carry your team. Like it shouldn't be an overreaction. It should be like, oh, oh, he he showed us, he showed us again who he is. Like he ain't did nothing that you ain't seen before. So I'm not I'm not going to overreact to what I saw. I, I predicted that game would happen. Uh, I mean, I predicted the, the winner, and it kind of went how I thought it would go. And I will say this, the uh, Dallas the Dallas put up a fight, but yeah. Dak, Dak, Dak didn't do anything that made me overreact, bottom line. Right, right. And so basically, also in other words, with this, you're saying that um, he cannot, you don't believe he cannot, or he can lead this team to the Super Bowl. And so as a result, you're saying that that is not an overreaction for right. us to believe that he cannot lead this team to a Super right. Bowl. Exactly. Exactly. Like, if you want to win a Super Bowl with this team, I, I even wrote down some notes today. I say, you know what, I'm not even going to. Just, just go off my what I, what I seen with my eyes. I'm gonna write down some things that that I really want to come get across. So the number one thing, I, the Dallas, if they need more defense, bottom line, the defense played well, but yeah. when you go into a 49 of teams like that, and you know, and, and 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 you know, you should know by now that Dak can't put a team on his back. So that means I need to get more defense because I I can't trust Dak in the offense to carry me. So I gotta. I got to get a, 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 another um, great defender, whether it be a deep, uh, I wouldn't say a defensive end, a defensive ends are good, but maybe a shutdown corner or something or a middle linebacker that just changed the outset of the game. Like that, that's just what it is. Cause you stuck with that. You ain't get like, you stuck with right. that contract. You stuck with him. Right. So, and, and they got weapons. The weapons is not the problem. It's, it's right. that is not that guy. So what else can you do? It got to be on the defensive end, in my opinion. This is uh, very interesting with the Cowboys because um, they got weapons on the offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, Tony Pollard didn't play in the second half, but ooh, ooh yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Um, Tony Pollard didn't play, but, you know, many people feel he still should have been able to get it done. Um, this is my thing, man. I'm talking about bad contracts. So Dak Prescott, in a way, his contract – you know, I guess people might not like his money. But remember, prior to him getting that contract out, people were screaming for him to get his money, remember? Yeah. Because he was leading the franchise to a positive direction. They were heading in the right direction. And you thought, okay, this uh, this guy says all the right things. He's very, very humble. Um, He's getting paid chump change, and he should be getting paid all this money. He's leading America's team one of the greatest franchises or the most known popular franchises in sports um, and all the sports y'all. Um, and Dallas has one of the biggest brands in the world. Um, so like, you know, give him his money. So yeah. he got his money, but now this team is coming up short and it's very evident that um, Dak um, struggles. Um, yeah. It's tough, man, to see him get outplayed by a rookie quarterback um, that was known as Mr. Irrelevant. This kid was not highly touted at all. 
Um, now, give, don't get me wrong. He got some great weapons in San Francisco. So it's kind of like that team is uh, so good with many with weapons. You kind of just plug in anybody uh, that can throw a, a solid football, and they they <laughs> they can do some things with that San Francisco team. But on the other hand, with Dallas, it's like, what do you do, man? Because, you know, I'm, I'm heading down to Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott, when he came in, world, um, was viewed as this great running back out of Ohio State. Highly touted. Had a great rookie year. Maybe even had a great first two years. Really nice. I, I won't say great right now, but they were nice. He was nice. He was showing the, the improvement. Okay, Ezekiel going to be one of them dudes. Now we look at Ezekiel Elliott, man, and he looked like a damn short yardage, third down, goal line, fat boy type of running back that it gets you a first down. Um, and that's basically it. But he's not a guy that's going to like go take his 75 yards, you know, cut to the left, cut to the right, outright. No. Yeah. That's that's yeah. not Ezekiel Elliott. And and I think in a way that holds them back drastically because you you put so much stock into Ezekiel Elliott and now you're really seeing who he truly is. But they can get from under Ezekiel Elliott now. His contract has no more guaranteed money, so they don't have to. They can cut him and get get from under him. Pilot is going to be a free agent. They're going to have to um, make a decision on him. But got to keep him. They uh, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the more versatile back, but um, exactly. I, still, I still wonder about can he be the bell cow running back? They were probably going to have to draft a running back or get one in free agency to still spell him. He's not going to be the 25 touches. He's not like a Derrick Henry type. He's a he's a smaller running back. So I don't know if he can take that pound. And we've seen what just happened, happened to Zeke. This is the product of a running back in the NFL and why they don't like to play running backs over 30 because this is what – this is this is the uh the decline that we see out of running backs. Yeah, and so yeah. we clean we seen it right in front of our eyes. Zeke was was I mean he used to do this, you know, he used to uh, start cooking, he used to right. feed me, feed me. I ain't seen that in a long time. I ain't yeah, seen that in a long time. This is true. Unless he do it after he get one yard, then do the feed me after yeah. he get a first down on uh third and one. Yeah. You know, but you can't really do that because it's only a yard, right? It's like what the hell, like. You gonna really say well, you know they celebrate anything at this point in the NFL, you know? <laughs> right, but you know, yeah, man, he he continued to do that after a while. People gonna be like, man, what the hell is he doing? Like, he only getting the first down, like for yeah, third and one. Like, just give me a bite this time, not the whole meal. Just give me a little piece, cause that's all I got. You know, I got the first down. Just give me a little little piece of the uh, food. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't get, I can't take the whole plate no more. But just get my little piece. You know what I'm saying? I guess so. Goddamn it, a sandwich, huh? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, man, you know. Right. And so my whole point is this, bro. You've been on our page. Al, you are a fan of this, uh, this podcast. You see all week on our page, Dak Prescott got dogged yeah. the entire year week for yeah. basically the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm awesome. sorry, y'all. This is Brandon Price. I'm going to defend Dak Prescott. And the reason why I'm going to defend him is because Ezekiel Elliott ain't turning out who the hell he was supposed to be. If he was any type of explosive running back, sometimes maybe you could take the pressure off the quarterback. Now, at the same time, this really exposed Dak Prescott, y'all, because if, w- w- without his boy, Tony Pollard, and with, uh, I don't know what the hell you got in Ezekiel Elliott now. Come on, y'all. And all five viewers know Ezekiel Elliott is trash now. He, he, he's basically a Ron Dane type of running back. He, he can't do nothing. If you got the right running back in some of those scenarios, Al, they could probably take that boy to the end zone. You get that ball to even, let's say, Cincinnati running back. You get that ball to a, a, a great running back. They go help their quarterback out. But Dak just basically out there, it's all on Dak. And he... He really, really got exposed. And so I love the fact that you bring it up, trying to get him some help at running back. Because for me, Don Schultz is very talented. Um, he got two nice receivers. Maybe you can get another receiver too. Um, yeah. The defense, I think, is the solid point of that team. Um, yeah. The kicker, he showed up. He had a he had a what the hell moment a week, uh, the, the wild card yeah. weekend. But he showed up uh, this weekend. Um, he was there to play, 
Um, it was just that Dak uh, really got exposed. He got exposed heavily. And so, um, yeah, let's go to the comment. Um, Hold on. Before you get to the comments, I got to address one thing <clears throat> that you said. You're trying to defend Dak Prescott. When have you ever seen when some uh, a team lose, oh, my goodness, I can't believe the running back. The running back didn't do his job. The running back. No, it's the quarterback. The quarterback, the quarterback. The quarterback always get take it. take all the blame. Yeah. Yeah, they touched the ball the most. And that that didn't, I mean, uh, Ezekiel didn't throw no interceptions. He didn't fumble the ball. So, you know what I mean? Like, we clearly see that through the interceptions. We didn't see Zeke fumble the ball. I could see if, like, Zeke fumbled in crucial moments. Oh, my goodness, he fumbled on a one-yard line. At, uh, none of that happened. Zeke is who we know who he, who he is right now. So he's not, he's not, it's not, once again, no overreaction even on Zeke. You know what I'm saying? This is who he is now. But right. Dak, Dak, you throw interceptions in the playoffs, oh, yeah, you're going to get that smoke for sure. And you know what? It's kind of warranted. He kind of had it coming because of what he did in the wild card weekend. And so, for instance, our brother Sammy Siles, he kind of got on me for defending Dak <laughs> in the wild yeah, card weekend because he was basically like, if this is your leader, um, he should have a better reaction uplifting his quarterback, I mean, his kicker publicly. Now, I, I told Sammy that I believe he definitely went behind closed doors and apologized, et cetera. What did, he, in say? That moment, what did he say? I missed it. What did he say? I missed What did that oh, say? He was just like, kick the damn ball. Like, don't kick the damn ball no more. Don't kick it. Like, because he just kept missing wow. it. And he talking to another teammate. And he said to another teammate, like, just kick the damn, you know, don't kick the damn ball. He trying to basically talk like he the coach. Like, you know, like, coach, don't kick the damn ball no more. Like, we missing these field goals. And so that got leaked out to the public, okay? And so Dak Prescott, you know, he, he going to get dogged for anything, especially as being a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, yeah, as stated, he got dogged out. Good morning, Ann. How you doing, bro? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Yeah, and so he got dogged out for that. And so people looking at him this weekend, and now they saying, you don't want to do these picks. You threw two picks where the defense helped you out. Dallas should have won that game if Dak Prescott played how he's supposed to play. They, what, got four, five field goals, uh, Al? Like, that means you're right near the touchdown. Um, and then on top of that, if I'm not mistaken, both of those touchdowns, I mean, interceptions was literally like, no more than 30 yards one other way. So that means they were, you know, like pretty close to the touchdown too. And, and he threw picks. And so Dallas controlled the game, even though it seemed like San Francisco did. Dallas came in the game, controlled the game, but Dak Prescott got exposed. And so this is why people are dogging him out. And so I've tried to defend him, but there's really no way to defend him because – he got exposed when Ezekiel Elliott rushing like Ron Dane out there. Um, uh, and, and, and Tony Pollard is hurt. Um, and, and basically, you just got to rely all on Dak at this point. And like, that, that's what happened. And, it was like, Dak, you got to take us there because we ain't got nothing else. And can you explain to him that uh, nobody goes into the uh, uh, press conference talking about, oh, my goodness, the running back didn't do his job. Oh, well, the really running back running back would you let him know that it's the court it ain't no defending Dak tell him to stop trying to defend Dak tell him to eat it it's the it's the quarterback or the coach you know the quarterback you know when y'all win you get all the glory and when y'all lose you get all the glory in the you know what I'm saying the coach you know what I'm saying they gonna get all the glory in the in the shame too uh as far as Dak go Dak um he had a good game against like you said had a good game against Tampa Bay I thought he would have played better that week, but you know, once I seen how the game was going, I'm not gonna lie, he they actually, you know, say he put me to sleep. <laughs> so I was like, uh, yeah, it's gonna be one of them days. Um he's been inconsistent uh a lot. I don't know. I think maybe they need to go a new route. I mean, just not getting it done. They got the team, they got the defense. Um yeah, I just I think it's time to go a new route, but it's like you know, who, it's a new route. Who, who yeah, maybe like this one. They it's like who they gonna get? 
Go ahead, then, my bad. No, you good. I'm just saying, who, it's like, who they going to get at this point? I mean, they went to the playoffs. I mean, and it, like you said, they stuck with that contract. They just gave them their money, which they should have been paid on. They should have been paid on before, so they wouldn't, you know what I'm saying, have to be stuck now. But They probably wouldn't be stuck I'm in stuck. this situation if Jerry Jones wasn't so damn stubborn. Yeah. But what if but yeah. what if they had second thoughts like like we seeing now? What if they knew like mm, no, that, that's, think, the point. That's, point. that's what it was. I think it had to be. And at the time, at the time, I think it was gonna be the like the highest paid quarterback in the league. Did they really want to do that at that time? Like make him the highest paid quarterback oh. in the league? Like, and he's really he's not a Patrick Mahomes, uh, Joe Burrow type. Like, you good, but are you that good to make you the highest paid at that time? They're like, nah. Let's, let's wait it around a little bit. Now they end up eventually having to give the money, and it looks bad now. But I mean, they they probably had a little cold feet. Tell yeah. you, man, this, this y'all like when you when you literally into this game, you literally see how this all breaks down. Us as fans, we kind of know Dallas is in this situation because we watched it over the years, and so front offices play an important role in the team's success, man. And this is just so evident. Like, it's so evident. Jacksonville coming out of nowhere right in, being like the Bears the year before, to go to the second round and put up a decent fight against Kansas City. And what I told y'all was going to be a fight. They put up a fight. They lost, but they put up a fight. Like, yeah, Jacksonville kind of, we're going to get to them shortly. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, man, it shows you these front officers play an important role in – with, with, let me ask you a Jack question. Didn't have no help, man. Nobody let me ask you a question. Um, uh, CD. Uh, real quick before you move on, speaking of front offices and quarterbacks, what if the Baltimore Ravens feel the same way about Lamar Jackson right now? The reason why they ain't gave him his contract. Um, what do you do? Like, like, because I feel like this is the same thing the Dallas to Dak Prescott situation. Um, he was fighting for his contract. And they didn't want to buck. They eventually gave it to him. But Lamar wants this contract fully guaranteed. What if they don't think he's that th that guy? I mean, like, we all know he's great. But we all also got questions about him uh, passing the ball. Uh, we know he's a great runner. But uh, his accuracy as far as passing the ball, I don't know if they gave him the, the right weapons to really see if he can do right. it. But it, it, the narrative is out there about his passing. So, In his like, yeah. Yeah, but uh, what do y'all think as far as uh, front office? Should they should they give him this contract? Or if they have reservations, like I believe Dallas might have had about Dak, should they hold off, franchise him, do whatever, whatever? Or what do y'all think they should do? Go ahead, Ann, because I got something to say. Um, I'm biased, so I'm going to say, hell yeah, and you give him his money. But they, prob they probably are, you know what I'm saying? kind of stuck in between in the Dak situation just because uh you know now he's hurt you know what I'm saying now he's hurt um he's been pretty healthy since he's been in the league except you know what I'm saying except this year but I think it's I think it's some you know what I'm saying resistance there because if not you know, he he would have been got the money they would have been got that squared away um got him some weapons or whatnot they haven't got him like a big number one receiver I mean, they got a great tight end. They've had running backs. They've just been hurt a lot. But um, the defense, they they had the defense. It's really the receiver. So it's just like, I don't know. I, I think it is a little resistance there. Because my, my opinion, I mean, if this is your franchise quarterback, you want to get him squared away and get that out the way. Because that's probably the hardest thing to find in the NFL is a franchise quarterback. Fully guaranteed, though? Would you give the fully guaranteed money? Uh, Watson got, well, I think, 230 fully guaranteed from Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. You're looking at that like, oh, 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 oh. That's what y'all gave him? Oh, that's my right. story. That's my right. story. And if, I, if I'm Lamar, he didn't play. He ain't played in almost two years. He got that fully guaranteed yeah. from, a from a new team, not even from a team that he was with. He got that yeah. from a new team. Yeah. So uh, from Lamar's perspective, and I think, from him and his mom's perspective, they uh his mom is his uh agent. Well, he is he's negotiating a contract. So from that perspective, yeah, I want I want everything for the guarantee. 
Uh, but no, wait, right, if, right. Ian is, if Ian is the GM, is he giving Lamar Jackson two two thirty plus guaranteed? If Ian is the yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it to him. I mean, he. he we drafted, we drafted this kid just based on he was the best available. We didn't know if he was going to be the next, you know, great thing. And he ended up taking us to the playoff, not only taking us to the playoffs, winning MVP. And, you know, basically putting us, keeping us afloat in the NFL and putting us back on the map. So I feel like he deserves it. Right. I, I feel like he deserves it, but no, I'm not giving it to him. And the reason why is because his injury status, um, you know, he's been hurt a lot, man. And so, and even though we know he's been hurt this season, remember, he's been hurt previous seasons, too. It's a reason why uh, my boy, um, and what's his name? Um, he, he's like Lamar Jackson, too. But what's that backup quarterback name? Lamar Hunt, or was it? Um, uh, Huntley. Uh, Tyler Huntley. Huntley. Yes, exactly. Um, Tyler Huntley has played a lot of football out and in over the past couple of years because of Lamar Jackson being now. He's played a lot of football. And so you got a valid argument to come towards him in with the injury status. On top of that, he hasn't led them to the championship game. Uh, the most he did uh, was get them a playoff win against Tennessee. Um, and then they came and uh, got whooped the following round. Um, so, you know, Buffalo beat the brakes off of him, remember? Um, and so you, you don't really have much leverage there. You haven't led as far in the playoffs. Yeah, you're talented and all that, but you're passing – that's another thing. And so they got a valid, I'll just put it like this out. They got a valid argument to come towards him with. Um, you know, he wasn't available this playoff run either. They put up a fight um, this this wild card round. They really did. Um, I feel like if Lamar played that game, they probably win that game, man. But, you know, yeah. like he, he's not there. And so I'm just saying they got a valid argument towards him. Do I feel like he deserves it? Yes. but. They like, hey, if you take a pay cut like Tom Brady or some of these other quarterbacks, we can build up this team in other ways, you know, and use this money to get you some receivers, et cetera, um, some other weapons, and we can go for a deep run. And so this I think that's what they're program. trying to um, do with him, Al, is trying to maybe ask him to go down a little bit, and then we get some other weapons in to help him offensively. This is his first big contract. You want him to take a pay cut on his first chance to get some big money? That, that they comes just want to win championships, though. They don't care about him. They care about championships. Listen, and and I and I'm with you. And like I, I'm actually on on both sides of the fence. If you if you say I'm the GM, I'm not giving it to him. I'm a franchise him and and bide my time. But I, on the Lamar standpoint, like I'm I'm holding the feet to the fire. Give me my money. Uh, I know that no no other team has given uh, guaranteed contracts out like the Deshaun Watson. Like uh, owners didn't like what they did out there because now you know everybody else looked. But uh, Lamar, like, nah, I want my money, and 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 we're gonna play poker. We're gonna stare at each other, see who blink first. Because do you really want to start all the way over and try to? Uh, uh, you want you want me to uh, cause locker room problems, not show up to camp, and chemistry issues, this that and the other? Because you don't want to give me. Do you want to do that? Or you want to give me my money? I listen. I am a black quarterback trying to get my money. Uh, you talking about taking a pay cut? No, nah, that comes later on. I'm still young. I'm trying to establish myself. Tom Brady, yeah, he can do that because you know he didn't did all of the um all all of the stuff. I don't know what his uh, first big contract looked like, but I don't like. I feel like white quarterbacks and black quarterbacks have different problems. You know what I'm saying? He probably oh, ain't yeah. look out for his whole family or whatever, whatever. Lamar probably got to put his whole family on his back, man. He got to get his money while he can get it. The NFL is it stands for not for long at any moment. Uh, exactly. <laughs> this is this this is very true. The NFL definitely stands for not for long, and so I'm totally with you. I totally understand that, and it makes a lot of sense for uh, Lamar. I hope he gets his money, man. I really, really do. But they got a lot of leverage. Um, sometimes, you know, they kind of looking at saying, hey, if you lead us to the Super Bowl, man, you're going to get endorsements, hell of endorsements after. You're going to get all this. And so you can be able to make that. Let's just get that championship first. And so Listen, I got a question. you brought up a good. You brought up, I'm my bad, Ian. One last thing, and then I'm going to let you go. He, talk, he, he he brought up Baltimore got the uh, most leverage. I don't know if I agree with that all the way. I believe I would say this. If they got the most leverage, it's probably 55-45. They could play hardball, which would I would, which I would do as a GM. I would franchise them. I think they can franchise them like twice. 
But remember, that money is guaranteed. So it'd be like 50 some million and another 50 some million just to franchise him. So he's getting a hundred million. Like if he want to play the um um Kirk Cousins, uh because Kirk Cousins played it to the T. Yeah. I mean, he got his money and it worked out yeah. for him. So he can still get his guaranteed money if they want to play it that way. But like, man, uh Lamar, like I say, he don't show up to camp. All the media is gonna be asking about is Lamar Jackson. And it's going to be a distraction. And it's going to be hanging over the team the whole time. And do they want to deal with that? That's why I think Lamar has some some, some big leverage as well. No, Lamar definitely has. This is a very close if we're talking about 100%. <laughs> this is very, very close because if, if if Lamar doesn't come back, what you go to Tyler Huntley. You see what I'm saying? Like, you're really going to go to Tyler Huntley. And so it might end up this. I, I really see Baltimore just being forced because with him not playing his playoffs, I think we can kind of put two and two together in and out. Lamar probably wasn't even hurt. He just didn't uh, want to play. He, I think he wanted to, part of him, I think, wanted to send a message. I think that brother could have played, but I think played. he wanted to send a message to them. This is what your ass get. If, 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 well, if why should he play? play, this is what you're going to get. And why, so, should he, yeah. why, should he, why should he jeopardize? Why should he jeopardize well, his future um, if he's not 100%? I believe he could have played. You've seen um, Vic say, put a brace on and play. And then you see RG3 say, no, nah, this is what happens when you put on a brace and play. And he, it showed his injury when he was in Washington. So I believe that he could have played, but he wasn't 100%. And uh, why would I go out there and 100%? You ain't giving me my money. Why would I go out there and risk right. it? There, there's no incentive there for him. And so yeah. this is um, a very, very good question, man. Very, very interesting question. Um, I hope Lamar gets his bag, man, because as you guys state, um, he deserves it. Um, he deserves it from the field, but it's been a various amount of things that has happened with injuries, et cetera. And so we'll see what happens with it, man. Uh, wow, y'all, we done spent 40 damn minutes there. Wow. Uh, talking about San Francisco and Baltimore. Um, on the other hand, uh, let's now progress, y'all, to talk about uh, Saquon Barkley. So Ian, um, or Al in this case, and then Ian, um, is it an overreaction to think that Saquon Barkley will go out into the free agent market and see what opportunities are out there for his big payday? He said that he doesn't want to break the bank. So he's doing what you asked Lamar to do to kind of take a pay cut, this and that. Now, this is the thing I think what happens with Saquon, in my opinion. Saquon is looking at it like, uh, do I want to uh, potentially – and then I could be wrong, but this is the first thing that popped up in my head. Do I want to move my family? I can get my money here. I might not get top dollar, but I ain't got to play that game. I can get some good money and, and, and keep everything kosher in New York instead of uh, playing a game, uh, probably getting, more, getting some money elsewhere. But do I want to uproot everything that I got in New York already? So that, 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 that's what I think will happen, man. But he said he doesn't want to break the bank. He's doing what you asked Lamar to do already. Right, right, right. And... Uh, Saquon, I don't think he wants to leave the situation in uh in New York just based upon you know they got a they got a new coach. Um, he got them team believing. Uh, maybe he likes you know the future and the direction that they're going in, and you know maybe there's some rumblings that they're gonna make some uh make some moves in this offseason. So I guess he's looking out for the team. Me personally, I probably would want to break the bank, but um. I mean, he now he's been hurt a lot. Um, I'm not saying that he don't deserve, you know what I'm saying, to get paid. Top, as far as talent, top um, top two running back in the league. As far as talent-wise, um, production and everything else, top tier easily. You know what I'm saying? He deserves to get paid, but uh, you just got to worry about him getting injured. And um, I think. I just don't see him leave. I don't see him leaving New York. Yeah, it, it would really shock me if he leaves New York. Um, I know there's a lot of rumbling saying, you know, the Bears should go get him and give him top dollar, but I don't I don't think he's leaving New York. You already made so many mistakes with our money. After 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 them having a great season like they had, or a surprise season like they had, I don't think he's leaving New York. Right. And I especially, hope especially that big market, New York, the, the biggest market. The biggest um, market. That's the big advantage you got. Huge market. You know, it's very expensive there, though, too, as y'all know. Y'all y'all been in New York. It's expensive to sell in New York. Um, yeah. So, yeah, um, it, it's very, very interesting. 
I think he probably plays the market y'all just to see what teams are looking for his talents. Because, you know, for instance, in Florida, there's no state taxes. And so, you know, yeah. um, it's, 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 it's advantages out there. So he can go out there and look. Uh, but my thing is I brought it up because, Al, a lot of Bears fans, oh, Saquon, Saquon, go get Saquon. And like Ian just mentioned, this man um, had a great year. But prior to that, he's been hurt every year. And so the Bears, this would be totally the Bears, Ian. See him have a great year and go break the bank with him. Then he come mess around, get hurt. You know? Uh-huh. And, and it'll be. I feel like that's any great player that comes to the Bears. I'm just sorry. And so, yeah, man, um, that would be absolutely tragic and it would be really bad. And so um, we'll see what Saquon Barkley do. But a lot of Bears fans screaming for Saquon, screaming for him. And so we'll hey, see you what happens. You know what's funny is, um, and Ian brought up a great point. He said he's seen what the, uh, the Giants is doing now, so he don't want to leave. But I guarantee you, if they was trash like they was last year, oh, oh, oh yeah, he go, oh, oh, I got to go, my brother. I got to go get my paper. No, nah, but he was like, oh, y'all, we we winning. We 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 did something. You know what? Maybe I'll take a little pay cut. I get my money, but we got a chance to win here. The, the, the whole thing changed because they was trash last year. Trash. He got he got hurt in Chicago. Yep, so sure did. Yep. And he cooked us this year. Yep. Yeah, he sure did. He sure did. Yeah. Um, yep. All right, fellas. Um, another uh reaction, no reaction. Is it an overreaction to think that the Jacksonville Jaguars going for are the new landlords of the AFC South? Overreaction. Overreaction is definitely an overreaction because I believe the Titans are a quarterback away from being right, 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 right there with them. Um, okay. uh, I think I believe Jacksonville is going to be good. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with. They're young. They got a Super Bowl winning head coach. The whole coaching and change. So they're going to be there. But I think it's an overreaction to automatically think they get oh they the cream of the crop already. Nah, Tennessee is a physical team. I like their coach. They need a quarterback, and they got a. Uh, uh, pretty good defense with a great running back. They'll be right back there if they get a, a quarterback. Okay. What about a receiver? And a receiver. Yeah, they need that too. That too. Yeah, because you, you gave away A.J. Brown, right, and to Philly. Um, yeah. and, and and they have suffered tremendously because of that. Um, as, as we always state on this podcast, you're not going to win much with a play-action quarterback. And Ryan Tannehill was the absolute – he's the absolute epitome of a play-action quarterback. But he got hurt, not not yeah. reliable. Had a terrible, terrible playoff run last year. Uh, we all remember that game. It was one of the worst performances of 2022. If you guys watch our podcast uh, from New Year's Eve, um, and so yeah, uh, and um, Jacksonville Jaguars. Is that no reaction to think that they are the new landlords with that young nucleus with a young quarterback? If they are the new landlords that the AFC South going forward. That's just, I would say just a slight overreaction. Um, I mean, we got to see what the coach going to do. Um, I seen something yesterday that said they, um, uh, you know, they're going to be fighting to get that number one pick, them in the Texas to pick, you know, probably pick whatever quarterback they feel like is number one pick. So they got a while, you know, well, I wouldn't even say a while because their defense is not that bad. Just, they just need a quarterback. Um, the Titans, they, they need to give up the Ryan Tannehill show. That they, they need to get that up. Um, obviously, I don't think they believe in Malik Willis like they think they do. You know, right. they brought in. They brought Did I watch in Josh them play? Dobbs. Yeah, yeah. They brought in Josh Dobbs. And then they it's, started. it's bad, isn't it, Al? It's really bad to watch. Ooh. Yeah, and then, you know, when he was in, they didn't even want to pass the ball. I think they only passed the ball like once or two, three no, times. No, they just gave Derek the ball. They just said take us home. They gave the ball the whole game. So I don't know if they really believe in Malik Willis. Um, fired the GM because he gave away A.J. Brown, which was stupid. Um, defense is solid. Like Al said, they got a, uh, Mike Vrabel. He's a physical coach. He's going to run the ball. They're going to play defense. They're going to play hard. Uh, they just need a quarterback and um, number one receiver. Um but Jacksonville, Jacksonville gonna be there though. I mean, they the, the only team right now in that division that has a quarterback. Facts. I'm not. I'm not even gonna talk about uh, the Texans. 
<laughs> Davis Mills. You're right. You just let yeah, him gonna, play. I'm... You let him play, Al, so you can get the number one pick. Right. <laughs> what's funny is, what's funny is, if Houston actually have to trade back up to the number one pick when they had a square in their hands, that's hilarious to me. Like, oh, oh love he did his thing helping the Bears out. Oh, he did his thing. Yes. Yeah. Gotta love love. They gonna, y'all, I, I y'all is looking out the, for the Bears. If I want Houston, if Houston wants the number one pick, what can Houston give me to get the number one pick? Are they gonna have to give them more picks? I say you give me, I say you give me Mr. Cooks. Give me Mr. Cooks. Mm. Yeah, but he yeah, I, but he ooh, ain't I would love Cooks to be in Chicago, man. I love that little lightning burst, man. He, he'll open up nice. his he nice. But he, but he ain't worth he not worth the number one pick. They gonna have to give me. They gonna have to give me a, a it'll be cooks a with more picks. Pick. Yeah, yeah, cooks yeah. with a pick. Or you can give me that running back, that rookie running back. He's gonna be cold. That running back, but they not I don't think they're giving him up. Though. Nah, nah, nah. They're not nah. giving him up. He's gonna be a the Colts, not, Now the one, the one, the one situation I will say, the Colts, if the Colts want the number one pick. I want Darius Leonard. I want Darius Leonard, and then, uh, and then what they got the third or the second, the third pick, I think. I think it's the yeah, fourth. I want Dar- yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's it's third or fourth, but yeah. yeah. And you, you get me Darius excited, Leonard. man. The Bears got some leverage this offseason. Oh, they definitely about to get a haul they back. They got, they, got back. Baby, yeah. they got some arguments to say, give me that, give me that. Like they they like going shopping, damn it, at in Paris or something. Like they, they need to hook Lovey up for sure. They need to hook Lovey up. Like he really hooked him up. Like if he, yeah. you know, he had a bear shirt on under that under that Houston stuff the last game. Like oh he, yeah, he, he like, oh, oh, oh. I got that. I got some for y'all. Yeah, he he did bear. Yes, this is going out to the platforms, man. I love this segment right here. Absolutely, yes, man. Bears got hella leverage, and they can say, "I want Darius. I want this." They they can go and argue for sure this offseason with that number one pick for absolute show. Uh yeah. But the Jacks, they gonna be there though. The Jacks, they gonna be there. Not quite yet, but they gonna be there. Yeah, they done gonna be definitely putting up a fight for that division uh, for a number of years going forward. As long as long as long as uh that quarterback is there, Mr. Sunshine. All right. Um <laughs> to the no reaction, y'all to think that the Buffalo Bills should be aggressive again in the free agency market to get more weapons for Josh Allen. Or do he have enough weapons already? Because they kind of was aggressive last offseason. But do y'all think they should be more aggressive this offseason? So is this a overreaction to think that the Buffalo Bills should be aggressive again? in the free agency market to get him more weapons? Because a lot of people just saying now, since they lost, Stephon Diggs is the only weapon they had. <laughs> Prior to that, man, everybody, Buffalo Bills, great offense. They got all these weapons. Then they lose. All they got is Stephon Diggs. People just be crazy. Like, one day they saying this, and the next day they saying this. And so, Al and Ian, can y'all break this down for the world? Because um, I thought Buffalo had enough weapons. And, and you can go first, bro. Um, no, we're not. The, the one thing we're not going to do, well, I know I'm not going to do on this podcast, I'm not going to make no excuses for Buffalo. Um, the only excuse I got for Buffalo is, uh, you know, they had a lot of injuries, a lot of injuries on defense. They lost Michael Hyde, like the first uh, game of the uh, week or the second game of the week. Um, no, they lost Von Miller early, early. Yeah, and not for uh, a decent amount of the like, year, that, that top corner. Yeah, he like played in the playoffs, but he was – have a six. Yeah. Um, he was supposed to come back, but he ended up tearing his towards ACL. So he didn't come back. Uh the DeMar Hamlin situation. And they lost somebody else too. But the one thing I'm not gonna do is make excuses for Buffalo. Um Josh Allen made some poor decisions this year. I don't know what got into him from like from the middle of the season to the playoffs. Um they got plenty of weapons. Uh Gabe Davis, he done made his emergence as a like true number one, two, true number two receiver. Um, uh, you know, Stefan Diggs, he gonna do his thing. Singletary um, is elusive, do it all. Yeah, you know, they got a great tight end. And I think his name Dawson Knox or something like that. Yeah. Yep. So been around there got, for years. They got, yeah, they got weapons all over. I'm not gonna make no excuse for Buffalo. They just didn't get the job done, you know, at home. They just didn't get it done. They had something to play for. They just came out later in. You know, 
Cincinnati came and uh did they thing. Oh, so they came in out for them. They just they just need they just need to get healthy. That's only you know that's the only thing I get them. They just need to get healthy. Josh Allen need to make better decisions. Um, he's a very good quarterback, but uh, he didn't play. He didn't play like that. Josh Allen I seen play in Arrow here. Uh, was that last year? He didn't. He didn't play like that. We seen a different Josh Allen last year. So um, he get back to that Josh Allen. They can get to the Super Bowl easily. But um, no, I'm not making no excuse for them. Now, when you that say team, easily, oh, right. and I don't know they get back to the Super Bowl easily. It's just it's a couple dogs in the AFC. Yeah, it is. It's easily. But, but them same dogs, when they play like that, it, it was hard to beat Buffalo. You know, uh, Mahomes, he had to come back in 13 seconds and make a miracle. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that was on the defense. That's why they went out and got Bob Miller. You know what I'm saying? So I can't make no excuses for Buffalo. Only excuses I got maybe the injuries, but they got their home field advantage. You got to get a job done. It's a way to go home. Ain't no, it's ain't basketball. It's in the series. It's when to right. go home. Anybody can lose. Anybody can win. This is my this is my thing. They they really miss Von Miller. Like that was the biggest. Uh, like he was that leader, you know what I'm saying, and bring pressure. Uh, they really missed him. But also, they need to run the ball. They too one-dimensional, too dependent on Josh Allen. And especially in that type of weather, you need to be able to run the ball. And I don't – it's like they, because they don't run the ball enough, you don't even know if they even got a decent running back. Like, I like James Cook. Right. I think he's the, uh, uh, the brother of Dalvin Cook. Devin Singletary, yep. I kind of I know who he is. But uh, James Cook, like, I would like to see him tote the ball about 20 times and see what happens. And in and, and that weather, you need to be more balanced. And then if you're more balanced, you take you kind of take away some of Josh Allen mistakes because you, 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 you take the ball out of his hand a few times. Now, don't get me wrong. He's great. We've seen what he can do when he's on point. But he also will give you the ball there once in a while. And so if they run the ball more, you know, I, I think you more balanced and you keep the defense a, a little bit off key because they you know you're more balanced and i just think in that type of weather you got to run the ball more that's all it is so it's 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 play calling it's josh allen it's injuries as well but yeah man like it was too much on josh allen in that offense to just up and go up and down the field and score all the time right 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 um yeah in regards to uh josh allen i'm not gonna make no excuses for him either i'm gonna say very similar to dak prescott he needs some blame too, damn it. He got exposed his damn self. They didn't run the ball. The weather was bad. Somehow Buffalo wanted to believe in him in, in, in a damn blizzard <laughs> and, 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 and have him go out there and play Superman. And he got exposed as well. Only thing, unfortunately, too, y'all, they ran up against some dogs in Cincinnati. And Cincinnati is on the mix. Cincinnati has been the best team in football. Um since they beat Kansas City earlier in the year. And so that could be very well with too, y'all. They might be a, they, they just a great team. They just ran up against Cincinnati. That's a perfect, that's a perfect point. Wrong place, wrong time. Wrong place, yep. wrong time, wrong quarterback, wrong team. Yep. All right. Um, NFL overreactions and reactions, y'all, for NFL championship weekend. Um, is it an overreaction, y'all, to think that if Joe Burrow beats Patrick Mahomes for a second year in a row? an AFC championship game, as well as be 4-0 against him head-to-head, that he is then, fellas, the best quarterback in the National Football League and everyone else is looking up to him? No, it's not an overreaction. If you're able to do that, even though I won't believe it personally, if he wanted to make that argument, who who, who can argue against him? 4-0 against Pat Mahomes? Two times in the AFC championship game? Nah, I can say... I'm that dude. This actually reminds me of uh, Brady and Manning um, in a heyday. And uh, even though I think Brady got the most of Manning, I always believe Manning was the better quarterback. This can be very similar. Joe Burrow is, it could be the, the, the Tom Brady, even though I believe Patrick Mahomes is better. So yeah, that's, that, that's my thought process. I over, uh, there's not an overreaction at all. Yeah. Yeah. And your thoughts, bro. Um, no, not an overreaction. Uh, <laughs> What Cincinnati, uh, what the Cincinnati players call it, they're going to play in Burrowhead. Exactly. That says a lot. Bro. Stadium. That's, so that's, 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 that's so disrespectful. That's a lot. So, uh, 
No, nah, man, Joe Cool, he's he been in his bag, bro. I mean, I'm excited to see them play tomorrow. I'm excited to see them play more than the uh, NFC game. I'm definitely excited to see them play. If Joe beat him tomorrow again, man, I I I would personally probably have to pick uh Cincinnati for the Super Bowl. That's crazy. Yeah, 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 man. Um, y'all know they've been jabbing with comments back and forth this entire week. Oh yeah. Uh, Chris Jones it's stated that Cincinnati good. offense ain't all that. Um. Then you got Jamar uh, Chase that responded back, like, we ain't worried about that fool. We ain't worried about nothing he's saying. And so they've been going back and forth, jabbing at each other uh, because Kansas City pissed off. They like, we want y'all. We, we, we want, we, we tired of, like, they want smoke. And so uh, I, I'm getting my popcorn ready, man. I don't know about y'all, but I'm getting yeah. my popcorn ready, man, to see what happened with uh, that game tomorrow night. Um, and so, yeah, lastly, fellas, um, sitting over reaction, fellas, to think that if Brock Purdy advances to the Super Bowl with this current roster, that the San Francisco 49ers will either tell Jimmy G or Trey Lance to kick rocks. Because in a way, this kind of reminds us, I don't know, but it's kind of reminds me of a way y'all of a Colin Kaepernick 2.0. Y'all remember, like, at that time, Alex Smith got hurt? And out of nowhere, it was this kid, Colin Kaepernick, that they brought in from uh, Nevada that could run the ball. Y'all remember how scary that offense was? When Y'all remember how scary that offense was? And so, is it an overreaction to think that if Brock Purdy advanced to the Super Bowl, y'all, that one of these quarterbacks, they're going to have to get out of San Francisco? You go ahead, Ian. Oh, uh, man. If Brock Purdy goes to the Super Bowl, <laughs> if you're the 49ers, what do you do? We got a That's tough decision to make. We have a third, what, second, third kick that we even have haven't even seen play, really. Um, we pay him all his money. We haven't even seen him play. We was gonna let Jimmy G go, but we double back had we needed Jimmy G because our um, future, he got hurt for the whole year. Jimmy G gets hurt, and now Purdy, he just moving along, and they didn't want, I think, 12, was it 10 or 12 games in a row? So now it's like, do we really need the both of y'all? We could just put anybody back there. Because he essentially, like we said weeks ago, he essentially doing Jimmy G's job. It ain't really a difference. Right. Jimmy G going to get there. Now, is he going to win it for you? I don't know. You know, if the defense played well or the running game popping or, you know, maybe. But I don't think he, if you need somebody to win it for you, uh, Jimmy G probably ain't it. But essentially, that's what Brock Purdy doing. You know, he ain't going to necessarily win it for you, but he ain't going to lose it for you either. But I I, I mean, in, in Trey Lance's shoes, it's like, man, I just got hurt. I need, you know what I'm saying, give me my shot. But, I mean, at this point, it's like. You can ship him, bro. You know how much bread you can yeah, give him? him for, you can ship him for, for some picks or ship him for a quarterback that y'all really want or really need. But in a tough situation, especially if they go to the Super Bowl, if they knock off the Eagles and go to the Super Bowl, they essentially got three They essentially got three quarterbacks that they can deal and do whatever they want. Listen. So it's, and it's, it's up in the air. I'll tell you what. They can take the cheap route out and just keep hurting. And get rid of the other two quarterbacks, or they could keep, or they, or they could possibly keep all three, or they can get rid of um, Trey Lance in the draft and just keep building on that team, or they could trade Jimmy G in the draft and keep building on the team. They got so many options, especially if they go to the Super Bowl. This I is think the, they got many. Period. This is what's going to happen. Jimmy G is definitely gone. Uh, he only signed, I think, a one year deal. Uh, they signed him. Yeah. Uh, and so he's going to be a free agent anyway. So he's easily gone. Now they got Brock Purdy. They probably keep Trey Lance. He's still under the rookie contract. It ain't going to be that big of a deal. He's still young. And it, it'll be an insurance policy. Now Purdy and Lance will probably have to duke it out to see who's going to be the starter. If he go, to, if Purdy go to the Super Bowl, he's going to have a lot of clout as far as uh, possibly being a starter. Trey Lance, but because he, he because he was such a high draft pick, he's going to have a, a, a fight. They want to see. Nobody wants to pick that high and not play they play they guy. 
this but this they regime, love his talent too, his arm talent, his talent. Yeah, they want Trey Lance to succeed, but they can't not Purdy if they take him to the Super Bowl and win it. That's a great problem to have, but they will be able to handle it. But Jimmy G is definitely gone. You can you can book that, book that for sure. Book that like a trip, huh? For sure. <laughs> Get them bags packing. Ah, uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. San Francisco is in a very very good situation, man, and. What franchise? Before you, before you switch this? gears, before you Go switch ahead. gears, I will say this. Let's let's double back to that draft. What if the 49ers would have took Justin Fields instead of taking Trey Lance? Yeah. Right. Imagine him with that team. Yeah. Oh, right. he perfect for that. Then, then, but then I look back too and say, well, if they take Justin Fields, they probably don't go get Christian McCaffrey. But still. Justin Fields in that offense and healthy with Cal Shanahan, they have the same record. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They, they just be so tough. It'd be bad. It'd be rough. <laughs> It'd be rough. That'd be a lot to stop. Um, yeah, but absolute sure, man. And you know what franchise we know y'all done did. They they just kind of ran into some luck in a way. But it, you gotta, you know, maybe this is not luck. Maybe this is just the 49ers organization. Hey, okay? maybe they see some stuff that people don't see. And so to run into Colin Kaepernick, you know, and, and have him come in, boom, right into the team, boom. You know, they've always had an identity of a physical team, y'all, right? Physical team, run the ball, physical against you, great defense, great linebackers, great defensive linemen, great safeties, nice corners. That's There's always been San Francisco formula. You know, now you put receivers there, you know, two nice receivers. You had George Kittle. You know, you brought him in. He's been a glue to that team for years and years and years. Future Hall of Famer, you know. And then now you got this great quarterback situation. San Francisco, man, shout out to this organization because um, they have done a lot of great things. The only thing missing with this franchise, y'all, is a Super Bowl, a recent Super Bowl. Because outside of that, they've done a lot of things right, I'll say, for the last 10 years or so. They have not been a like pushover team they have been a tough team physical team playoff team an identity and they stuck with it and here they are again 2.0 who 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 goes through this other than san francisco and so yeah man that, that's that's a hell of an organization right there um but fellas we got to get into this uh championship weekend we got to make some picks okay and so al i'm gonna need your pick and i'm gonna need your pick um we got to go with the picks. And so the San Francisco 49ers at the Philadelphia Eagles. Al, who wins this game, bro? Oh, as the playoffs go further, it gets tougher and tougher. This is the toughest pick that I've had to make thus far. And I am going with the Eagles. I believe the Brock Purdy uh, run is over. I believe that defense, that uh, atmosphere in Philly, Brock Purdy first time being on the road, I believe the Eagles take this one. Yeah. Um same same with me. Same with me. Uh I think I think the Purdy train is over. Um, in my opinion, at some point, he's gonna need to win them the game. You know, he kind of he kind of got off the hook oh, yeah. last week with Dallas. Yeah, he kind of got off the hook last week with Dallas. Uh they play somebody else. Uh, they probably would have lost. Um yeah, I think Philly looks scary. They look hungry, playing with a chip on their shoulder. I'm going to take Philly. Mm. I'm with y'all. I'm going with Philly. Good job, right. Brandon. You all, you used, you usually try to be the oddball and go against <laughs> what everybody else say. You see what happened <laughs> last week. Now you changed his tone. <laughs> but, no, Philly, man, I've been having Philly uh, since the regular season. Uh, probably don't know, Al, but I've had Philly as my pick for the Super Bowl. Hey, yeah. all right, Nostra Thomas, pretty good job. Yeah, man. Uh, Cincinnati, y'all, at Kansas City. Uh, Al, who you got for this one? And who you got for this one, bro? This is another great game. I got the Bengals. Um, it's tough to pick against Kansas City, but with that ankle, we don't know what that ankle is going to be like. And uh, and Kansas City, a defense has always been like a question mark. They never like, you know, you know, you know Chris Jones, he going to come through, but that defense is always a little suspect. And we... <laughs> Joe, and listen, 
they got they got uh the wide receivers great and Joe Mixon is running like a man possessed right now. Like he to me, he was never uh like a top-notch running back, but the way he's been running lately, like this is what I mean by balance. They got him running the ball, even though Joe Burrow is that guy, they still are balanced and feeding that boy to rock, something that Buffalo need to take notes on. But the way they playing offense right now, and that defense is suspect. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Bengals, and he will be four and zero against Mahomes. Mm, yeah, everything you're saying, uh, Al, today you're on the roll. Uh, I said a week earlier. Um, if you guys remember everything you're saying, I said a week earlier that uh, about Brock Purdy as well as Kansas City defense. And who you got, bro? That's probably the toughest one to pick, but uh. Um, man, this one's hard, but I'm gonna go with it's hard to go against these guys at home. But I'm gonna go with Cincinnati. I'm gonna go with Cincinnati. I'm gonna go with Cincinnati. I'm gonna go with Joe Burrow, Jamar, T. Higgins. I'm gonna go with them boys, man. They they look hungry, they look hungry, they've been looking hungry, and they got hot at the right time of the season, just like last year again. Um, it's definitely gonna be a dog fight to come back to the championship game. Same location, you know what I'm saying? At Arrowhead, you know what I'm saying? The the tough one of the toughest stadiums to play in. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fight. You know what I'm saying? And you know, Kansas City, they fell away. They want their revenge back. You know, this part two. So it's 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 gonna be some talking, you know, it's gonna it's gonna be some furniture moving tomorrow. <laughs> so uh it's gonna be a tough game, but I'm gonna take Cincinnati. Uh and we have to remember too. Uh, I don't know how Mahomes' ankle is or how healthy he's gonna be. That can affect the game a little bit too. So it's gonna be a tough game, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna be the eyeball on this one. I'm going with Kansas City. Um, I'm not batting against no. Patrick Mahomes. Um, I do think uh, this will be this gonna be a classic game, man. But I think Patrick Mahomes, um, he got something to prove. He got a lot on the line tomorrow, y'all. His, I'm not saying his legacy's on the line, but Patrick Mahomes tomorrow got a lot to prove. He know that if he lose to Joe Burrow, he know what the narrative's going to be. He knows that. He knows that, you know, he got a window with uh, Travis Kelsey coming up. He knows that he is uh, viewed as the best quarterback in football and that Joe Burrow is right on his neck. He's lost to him three times. He been hearing about Burrowhead Stadium. Think he want to have this known as a Burrowhead Stadium? No. But you, you can't believe that his ankle is going to be 100% by Sunday. I, I, I agree. I totally agree about his ankle. But sometimes greats find ways. And so... Yeah. But I'm, I'm not... I ain't I'm, I'm, I'm not... I, I, this going to be... A, this going to be probably the, the game of the year. I, I, I think this... this there's no way this game should be a dull game. I, I, this is going to be, this going to be that game right here. Do you um, trust Kansas City? Do you trust Kansas City defense though? Because I don't believe that it might not be Pat Mahomes. For I think he might ball out. He might do his thing. But do you trust Kansas City defense to be able to hold that juggernaut of an offense in Joe Burrow? Because I don't. I, I think they can do enough. But I, I think at the end of the day. Um, Kansas City, as they always do, it comes down to Patrick Mahomes for them. No disrespect to that defense, but I think the defense can do enough to allow Patrick Mahomes to do enough. And so um, that that crowd, um, being in Kansas City, it's not the easiest of places to play. Um, it's going to take a, a, a miracle. I'm not saying a miracle, but it's going to take a hell of an effort for Kansas City to win the game. But I think Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes is built for that. I think they're built for that. They've been through that. Five straight AFC championship games. Um, so, yeah. But if say, for instance, y'all, Cincinnati win this. Then you got five straight AFC championships. You know, your man's um, Andy Reid is one and two in the Super Bowl, right? Losing record there. He lost so many championship games, y'all, as y'all know, with uh, Philly. Um, you know, now you're coming to Kansas City, and if you lose this one, then there's another narrative that Andy Reid has missed to come up short. <laughs> Because he always gets to the championship weekend, loses continuously all the time. And so it's a lot of narratives that happen. But I think Kansas City pulled this out in the classic game, man. 
that's the only way Kansas City will win this game. Because other than that, they they're not just going to beat up. They're not going to beat up Cincinnati. It's impossible. And so yeah. Um, lastly, fellas, um, quickly, really quickly, the LA Lakers y'all just picked up Rui Hachimura to bolster their front court and have some insurance for the next time Anthony Davis might go down. Quickly, do you guys like this move and does that make the Lakers better? It's, it's a great move for the Lakers. I'm tired of them cheating pe people out of deals. I, I know that. I'm tired of, like, I'm, I'm tired. Why is it that the Lakers always get these type of deals, but they not the owner receiving end of these deals where they trade a, a, a hamburger and then and, and two jars, two, 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 two uh, uh, cans of pop for a, a potential <laughs> uh, a, a, a lottery pick. Like, why are they... I remember the Pau Gasol deal. This reminds me of the Pau. They traded trash, which ended up being Marc Gasol. But at the time, like we like, what? They gave up who for what? This is what I'm saying. Kendrick Nunn and, and what, two or three second round picks for for a, a top a top 10 draft draft pick? Like, dude is a wing, a, 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 a good size wing that's going to help them tremendously. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's going to like put them over the top, but I just don't, I'm, I'm not a Lakers fan to start off, but I'm just tired of them cheating a lot of deals. That's it. That's it. Yeah, I'm angry. The, the Lakers got their leverage, man, in the L.A. market, you know? I think that's Teams a big thing. Stop. Teams need to stop doing it, though. Like, I'm not. It's somebody all like, oh, yeah, we're going to give you Kendrick Nunn and, and three. I'm not doing that. Uh, no. No. It's okay for a team to say no to the Lakers. That, that That's it. Hey, man, maybe, uh, maybe uh, you know, you, you, maybe your man's man – um. You know, uh, maybe the organization, maybe the buses. I don't know, man. Maybe they having coffee with folks playing golf with them. Who knows? <laughs> so yeah. Um, so, yeah. Somebody, somebody put on Facebook that they this was payback for the uh, Westbrook deal that they was you know giving them giving them this this trade because of how the Westbrook trade went. So it, they was helping them out because of that. So I was like, that make might make a little sense. It could be. Also, remember Rue Hachimura, Russell Westbrook, um, Los Angeles, Thomas Bryant. <laughs> And it's one more cat on their team. Um, they all played in Washington. Now they all together with the Lakers. So they kind of probably wanted that unit uh, to, to be back united again, too. So, uh, Ian, quickly, bro. Um, do this help the Lakers? Um, I mean, yeah, you need bodies simply because you don't know, you know, what's going to happen with Anthony Davis. He's liable to get hurt walking down the stairs at the arena. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> at this point, you just need bodies. It's a good move for him. It's crazy. You know, they traded Kendrick Nunn. Kendrick Nunn went – the first game he went over there making plays. He ain't play like that. None of the time he was over there in L.A. He came over there the first day. So, I think it, I think it's probably a good move. It's a good move for the Lakers. But do I think it's going to get them over the top? Uh, no, I don't know. Yeah, we ain't saying that. I think it's going to get them over the top. Probably makes them better, though, right? It makes them better. And so, yeah. lastly, fellas. Uh, with the way the Bulls have continuously come up short this season of our expectations, should the Bulls, y'all, consider making a move to upgrade this roster? No. 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 Don't make no move to upgrade the roster. Listen, it's time to blow it up, get a new coach. Uh, we tried. I like the, I like the, I like the attempt. I like the attempt that they tried. They went and got Alonzo. They got uh, traded for, I mean, got DeMar and Vooch. They made an attempt. It didn't work. I don't like the coach. I never liked the coach when he, even when he was in OKC. When they first got him, I didn't like him. I felt like they did what they wanted to do in OKC. They ran their own offense. There wasn't no coaching going on. And and the Bulls, uh, team IQ, coach IQ is low. Um, DeMar DeRozan, great player. He don't know when to pass the ball. Pass the ball. Zach Levine, <laughs> take, take bad shots. IQ, most talented dude in the world, but take bad shots all the time. And Lonzo is on the shelf. And so at this point, it didn't work. You tried it. I like the attempt. The fact that you tried. Okay, we go back. It didn't work. Let's let, let, let's change. Let's change it up. Right. So somebody got to go. Yeah. Yeah. A few folks got to go for sure. Uh, and um, your thoughts, bro. Um, I'm with Al. So no, we don't need to make a move. I feel like talent wise, I feel like the team is the team is fine. I don't feel like they need to trade Andre Drummond. I think I seen that the other day. Right. They don't need to trade Cooper. So Caruso don't need to go nowhere. No Caruso. The team is fine. They got Jordan Drogic. They got a good bench. Starting, you know what I'm saying? The starting five is, is, is nice. So the Bulls are going in reverse. So last year, they beat all the teams that they were supposed to beat. That's why we was number one in the East. 
And now we're beating all the teams that we couldn't beat last year. But now we're losing to the teams that we're losing to garbage teams. Like, like what Orlando. are we doing? Right. And it all comes down to Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan is not it. Billy Donovan is not it. And then we gave him a four-year extension. I'm like, now we per- probably stuck with this dude. We don't – Billy Donovan is the answer. He's the key. If they have better coaching – and I know Lonzo been hurt, which is unfortunate. But in Chicago, everybody get injured in Chicago. But that's another story. <laughs> but it's just unfortunate Lonzo been hurt. But still, this team is still – they still got talent. Levine does take bad shots. And then I feel like on offense, they get in this set with, okay, come set the pick, Vooch. One-on-one, DeMar, everybody get the fuck out of the way. And we can't do that in the play. We can't get to the, we can't do that in the playoff. They did that in the playoff. And Milwaukee wiped, wiped, wiped us off the map. That's why we lost. Really? So, I mean, I, I love the bench. We got so much talent off, off the bench. The bench is the bench has is, is been as great as they've been since we had that bench with Derrick Rose when they call him the bench mom. That bench is, is that good. Uh the starting five is cool. Bucci been playing a little more aggressive this year. He had, a, I think, like a couple triple doubles this year. So he's been playing good, but it's the coaching for me. It's the coaching. We don't have, like, no offensive sense. It's just like a pick and roll, and it's one-on-one Levine, one-on-one DeMar. Whoever hitting that night, he going to get the ball. Or if it's, you know, Bucci in the corner, pass him the ball, he going to co- take a couple threes. We need, we need a better offensive set, and that comes back to Billy Donovan. And sometimes they don't – and – they need to get better on defense too. They need to consistently play good defense. That's that's but a big do we need problem to right there. No, we don't, we don't need to make no moves. Talent wise, we have talent wise, we have it. It's just coaching and Billy Donovan not it to me. Right. Yeah. Yep. And so yeah, fellas, FY, that is uh, our conversation for this morning. Uh, that was great, man. It went by fast. Um, world. Um, we think. We had a number of viewers. Now they didn't necessarily hit the like button, but they stayed for us with a lot. They stayed for us for most of the podcast, and it's uh, great to see that. So, Al, we thank you, bro, for coming on with us. Um, and so now, as we conclude our conversation, um, I do want to ask you this, bro: As we head into the weekend, do you have any final thoughts or shoutouts? Uh, real quick, my one one final thought before we uh get up out of here. Uh, we talked about Billy Donovan. It was kind of like, bro. It was like a secret that they gave him a four-year contract. It wasn't even in the news. Like it was like on the slide. Like y'all over there hiding. Mm-hmm. Like what y'all doing over here? Because y'all y'all yep. probably aren't supposed oh, to do it in the first yeah. place. So y'all gonna sit and try oh, to sneak yeah. extension on the fans. Like 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 we stupid. Nah, I'm I'm offended that y'all did that. I'm offended. I'm offended. All right, my final thoughts. Uh, enjoy myself again as always. Just had to get that out the way. A little anger. A little anger came out. You know what I'm saying? I'm a little I'm a little angry about my Chicago team. But yeah, um, I'm enjoying myself as always, man, and uh, uh, just do great things. There you go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. And any final thoughts? Shout out, bro. Um, I have one on a more serious note. Um, uh, not sports related. Um, R.I.P. to was it Tyree Nichols? Um, yeah, beat by those what, five cops in Memphis. Yeah. Um, they dropped the video. They dropped the video yesterday. It was pretty mm-hmm. horrific, and that was just real unfortunate. Um, he basically didn't fight back, and you know that was it was tough watching that. Um, it's sad. You know, we seen another black brother. You know, um, die by the hands of the police, and I mean this time, you know, by another group of his own kind. You know, it was really sad to see that to hear about. So, you know, I repeated that brother, prayers to his family, um, prayers to Memphis. And we just got to do better. We just got to do better as people. Um, just prayers to his family. Um, another happy note, um, we got the last two weeks of football, basically. So uh, we got to enjoy that. Um, going to have some good games this weekend. Uh, there's going to be plenty of basketball on. And hope everybody have a good weekend. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. And definitely, man. Rest in peace to Tyree Nichols. I'm in the process of still watching the video in. So thanks for bringing that up. We definitely got to do better as a people. We got to support each other more. Um, and we got to uplift each other more. We really, really do. It's a lot too much divisiveness in our community. And that's a big problem. 
um, that we have as a people, for sure. We hate each other. We don't even know why. Like, why? You know, yeah. just silly stuff, man. And so, yeah. Uh, and thank you for bringing that up, bro, because um, this podcast is definitely uh, more than sports. We do talk about what's real. And so I appreciate you for bringing that up. Um, on the other hand, uh, we will be on break next weekend, everyone, um, because there is no football. Um, we will cover the Super Bowl uh, with our um, various uh, and Jamar and. And after that, we on break again. Um, and we'll do, um, as you know, and we do the uh, March Madness uh, show. And so um, yeah. that's, that's basically coming up for our podcast. So we appreciate you all for rocking with us. We appreciate your support. May you all have a great weekend. Be blessed um, and be safe and keep God first. Peace. Peace.